M0FXB, welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing a beginner's guide to the TYT TH9800 quad band radio, but it does receive more bands than the quad band, which is 2 meters, 70 centimeters, 6 meters, 10 meters. Now, if you've not seen this radio before, it's almost like two radios in one because you have separate controls on each half. Look here, low, VFO memory, home and scan. And then you've got your menu button there, which is the dot in the middle, a microphone that controls many, many features. It has an up down button on the top. It's a nice microphone, actually. Uh, and you've got pre-programmed functions on P1, 2, 3 and 4 and full DTMF control. At the moment, you can hear Hubnet. And I'm very reluctant. I've got some memory channels programmed in. Now, this does also do air band as well as the quad band. So, we'll quickly just, just show you if we press these ABC buttons, you'll see different bands show up for receive. So, there's 26 megahertz, 47, 134. Which is where we would see our air band. It automatically selects air band when that's turned on in the menu. You can see it says AM and on the B to go from the this side radio to this side you can just press the button here and you can go back like that to control each half and it is full dual receive. It's two VFOs, it does cross mode. So let's just um, press these buttons as well. The D is changing it to 350 megs, 400 megs, which is hand bands really. 750 but it goes up to 950. To go back to memory mode you just press VFO or memory mode and if you go on this side and do the same again that's memory mode. If you're in VFO mode you can type the frequency using the microphone. So VFO and then we're going to type in here 145 and we need to get into VFO mode on this side one sec. Press the VM button, one, four, five, then say six, eight, seven, there. Yeah. And we're in VFO mode. Now to set your repeater functions, you just press the dot for the menu, like so. And you can start to scroll through the menu. We're on the B section at the moment. You can do sort of what they call single receive. If you just press this button here, it puts 13.8 volts. So that's the, the, the current that's coming from my power supply. But the nice thing about it is that it actually mutes one half and keeps things nice and simple. So we're on the, the B section, let's call it. And the first thing I would turn on is, see the ARS? That's the automatic repeater shift. I would turn that on because that way you won't have to keep putting in your minus and your pluses for your repeater. So if you press this button whilst that's highlighted, number two, press and just turn it on and then press again. And then now when you add a repeater, it's going to automatically put that shift in for you, which I think is, is definitely better. And before I forget, the head unit does remove and then you can put a cable between and mount the head unit which is plastic the case is metal but it's plastic and you can program this device using a USB cable that plugs into the back and then the software you can use chirp or you can use the original software that TYT make so anyway keep going with the repeater settings so we've turned that on if we back out from that just by pressing the dot you'll see that it's now got a minus shift there already and if I briefly just M0 FXB, it puts the shift in, but we'd still need to set our tone. So if we go back to the menu, just press the dot, and then turn to number 24. 24, repeater mode, press it. And look, again, you could set the minus and the plus, but we don't need to, because we've, we've got auto selected. So then we'll go to number 20, no, number 30. By the way, 28 is your frequency step. Every time you press, you back out as well. Go to 30 and there's your tone, press, and then we're gonna need 94.8 for our repeater, just by turning the knob and then press. 
So the tone's in there, and then we want the tone shift, which is at number 27. So go back to 27. If you're not sure what tone shift is, or oh, I think it's 27, let me just check. Yes, it is, uh, 27, and it says shift, press it. So that when you key the mic, it needs to go down by the correct amount, which is 60, uh, is it 60 megahertz or 60 kilohertz? I always get confused, but anyway, it says M there for megahertz. Um, but sometimes you might want it 7.6 7 for, a, for a 70 centimeter repeater. But, but that's where you adjust it, on menu 27, so press. So right now, if we back out, hit the menu. I'm not sure which repeaters are open in my ear at the moment. We still need to make sure the tone's on because I'm not seeing that the tone is on at the moment. We can set the power using this button here, look. Set the power. That's interesting because when I was in this mode, if I press that, it let me change the megahertz. But when I press the, go back to dual receive and I try and press the power, it lets me do the power from five watts to 50. Interesting, so, okay, fair enough. So some different functions are enabled when you do the single screen. Let's put it back into dual, and then we'll put that on memory mode. Can you see how you're controlling both halves separately? And just notice that menu 35 is cross repeat. 34 is wide and narrow. Thirty-two is your timeout. That's how long you speak for. So to turn on the tone, you want to go to tone M, which is thirty-one. Press the button and turn it on. You want encode. If it's encode and decode, it's when you're receiving. It will apply the ninety-four point eight tone as well. And if it's not tr transmitting or receiving that, you won't hear anything. So you, need to, you would need to set up. I just do encode, which is just when I key the mic. It will just do that if we back out. So now we've got the encode turned on minus shift. And if we set the power to quite high, I'm sure that we would up open that repeater. Let's give it a go. My microphone here. Here it goes. M0 FXB calling for a test. MW0 WTK M0 FXB. Hey, yeah, yeah, nice to meet you. How's my audio? Back to you. Oh, thanks. Yeah, you, you sound fine. I wouldn't say you're you're quiet. You're okay with me. If I'm quiet, maybe I could adjust my uh, my mic gain back to you. Yeah, hi Paul, good to meet you. I'm Andreas and I'm in Western Supermare using a quad band radio, uh, TH9800, very similar to the 8900. Back to you, Paul. What is the transceiver you're using? And I'm running about, I need to check the power here actually. Um, I think I'm running 20 watts. Back to you. There you go, we'll end it there. Thanks very much for the test, Paul, but well, it's working well for you. I'll stand by and uh, enjoy your day, M0FXB, 73. Hey. Hey. Cheers, 73. And then you're up the top here, you've got some buttons up and down. Up and down on the top, you've got the LED there that comes on green and red. 
It's not going green when I receive. Let me just turn down the squelch. So just red at the moment when I TX. Working well, no problem with that. So just overall, you know, the basics are if you want to just type in a frequency, you can just press VFO and just type it in. Okay, we weren't in memory mode there. You've got power, VFO memory home scan as well. And it will scan memory channels. And if you're in VFO mode, it will, let's go to that. It will scan VFO channels. That's gonna pick up some airband with a bit of luck. Squelch is the outer knob. Outer knob is your squelch bottom. Turn that up. Channel change is this knob here. We stop scan just by pressing the scan. Change the channel. You can change the frequency steps. You saw that in the menu selections. Press, and then you can go to this side and this side. But if you press, did you notice it let me change the megahertz? When I press that as well, you've got the ABC buttons, main menu button. And I think that's about it. The speaker is on top. It does come with a car mounting bracket. Should we just take the head unit off just for the hell of it while we're here? So I know I should turn it off first. Turn it off and then look. I'm just gonna think this either. Yeah. Just pull and quite a short cable that comes standard, but you know, it looks like it's just an RJ. Is it 245 is it anyway just the usual ethernet type cable there like so and let's show you that from this angle quite hard that's the back and i would just say that because it's plastic you want to take it easy you know with that because i feel like it wouldn't be hard to break it okay probably makes sense to uh disconnect the microphone before you do what I've done. Actually, actually if I'm going to sh show you that, I'll show you the microphone connector, which is on the back there. Sorry, on on the side. Just pops in like that. And pops out. I'll take it out, and then we'll go like so. Put it back in. I just don't want to break it, basically. So I'm not going to force it, I would recommend probably you pull it back a bit. There you are, it did clip into place. So that's probably the thing I would say about it is the the plastic nature of some of the front is, you know, you, you might break it. But it's a really nice looking quad band radio. I got mine for 160 brand new because they do offers on AliExpress and you know, you can talk to your friends on 70 centimeters so 430.925 which is what gb3fh is you can change it you don't have to view the channel names if you press the dot and go to number nine wrong side you got the dimmer there number nine display mode change it to frequency then back out and let you see the frequencies not the memory names and, and vice versa Bye for now. Thanks for watching my YouTube channel. The programming cable goes just there. Mine came with one. And it works, like I said, with Chirp. And that's my power cable, SO239. And yes, there's a little fan there that runs as well. Bye for now. All the best.